morning you lovely lot. Um, today I'm doing um, some machining that is related to the tooling on the machine. Um, so I bought a little while ago these ER25 um, holders and I wanted to use those to hold the, um, <clears throat> I'll bring you in, um, to hold the threading tools. Basically today or last night we were machining um, hinges which are just down here if I can grab one. <coughs> right now I don't know if you can see this but the hinge is missing its thread and basically because this had pushed all the way back no one had noticed um, and yeah so <laughs> if it didn't do its job properly. So obviously that's a problem and it's certainly a problem for stainless steel which is why I originally wanted to do this. Now originally I machined these little like holders myself and the problem was is that these little these nuts in the top don't engage all the way down to the um, tapping tool. So um, I used a little screw inside that basically pushed down on it too. That's not the best thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine some collets. Now luckily the size that the, um, the shaft on the back of this is the same size as this holder. Um, the only really annoying thing is I would have bought that holder had I known um, that this was this long. In the picture when I bought it online I bought it from Accu and um, the picture showed the nut back here. So I was like oh it's a really short holder it'll be fine. Um, so I'm a little bit worried it's going to be a little bit long but I think it's going to be okay um, just because there is quite a lot of room for the tap to go inside so it's only going to, it's going to stick out a little way but no further than how far the drills etc sit out of here when we have like longest drills in there so I don't think it's going to be an issue um, so I'm loading a one inch bit of aluminium bar um, Everything else was set up already um, tooling wise on here so we should be able to pretty much cycle start on a program that I wrote ages ago which let's see if I go call it or coal no nope, definitely no coal oh where are you holder I, I literally I never know what what I've used oh look boring bar holder that's boring bar holder hollow rod, hollow rod, let's have a look at the boring bar holder. No, it isn't going to be the boring bar holder because that was done, that was last modified on the 28th of June last year. Definitely not that program. Um, so, uh, might have to just look through manually. So that's the boring bar holder. Bond hinge, copper hinge, ultra wide, glare guard, wall light, shaft bore, recessed AL, tree light, tree front, wall, wall, tube, thread turn. I really need to sort out the names of these. They're a bit kind of all over the place. I know the guys certainly struggle with finding what programs they need. It's quite, we should really use the files this system a little bit more and actually put things in folders. I'm wondering whether or not I can put a USB stick in this, download everything onto the USB stick, resort the file system and then just upload it rather than trying to fiddle about with it on here because it is a bit hard to, um, it's time consuming, it's not hard, it's time consuming to alter all the file names and move stuff into folders etc. <clears throat> now while I've been chatting I wouldn't be surprised if I've gone past what I wanted. Let me find it, I'll come back. Right, I've got it. Apparently I called it drill sleeve. Makes sense now, um, <laughs> I guess. Must have made sense at the time. Um, so I'm going to load up the um, bar. Now, this is going to be a little bit... Did I say hypocritical? Is that the right word? Well, I don't know. Um, I was obviously just hands in the machine, um, but the machine has only just been started up this morning, no coolant has been run or anything like that. Now the reason I'm wearing these wonderful, wonderful gloves is because we've been talking about the coolant um, and we had this issue where the coolant was, um, we kept getting holes in t-shirts and trousers and things like that and we were like, oh it must be the acid from the anodizing. And eventually we worked out it wasn't that, it was the coolant that was actually causing holes in our clothes. So we kind of figured that maybe the coolant's not exactly um, the safest thing to get on your skin. 
Um, so I put in place a policy to make sure all the guys wear these when they're operating stuff on the inside of the machine, just to, you know, make sure that they're protected. Right, let's get this bar in. Okay, and let's check it's clamping. Yeah, it does clamp. You notice it clamped a little bit weird there. If you know a Hassel one, or if you've heard it, if you've just heard it clamp before, and I think we've got a little bit of oil or something in the airline. Not good, is it? <sighs> yeah. Let's just make sure the pin's undone. It is. So let's do this program at five percent. Now, what what I do is I'm going to run one make sure it comes out all right and then I'll run another with a GoPro at 100% and then you'll be able to see the machine in. I am just going to say this program is probably the most inefficient program I have seen run on this machine in a long while. I clearly I wrote it just to make one sleeve um, and I think a lot of it was from the um, visual visual programming VPS visual yeah visual programming system that's on the machine and um, yeah it's pretty god awful really but it's one of these things that we don't necessarily worry about um, doing the efficiency. If you're only ever going to do one of it, it makes no difference to it. What's the point? So, um, while the machine was running, I had to top up the coolant. Now, these are the things that they don't tell you when you buy a machine about all the extra added costs. Coolant. Now, hang on. You're thinking, or if you know coolant, it's not expensive. It's not. It's maybe 100, 150 pounds for like a big um, container of it. But there's the water. Now, what do I mean by the water? Well, watching the Hass advice recently on coolant, because we've been trying to take care a little bit more of coolant. Firstly, you have to have a refractor to measure the um, dilution ratio of the coolant. So that's about 150 pounds, maybe 100 pounds. Then the water, um, you, you can use tap water, and you, you're recommended to use tap water on the first time you fill it up, or whenever you've renewed the whole coolant or anything like that but thereafter you should use distilled and they recommend reverse osmosis system which you know a reverse osmosis system is pretty pricey it's probably the best way to do it though because um, it would require a lot of distilled water I don't know how many litres the coolant tank is I'm gonna put it out there and say maybe 50 um, and you know so so you know it's a lot of containers of, of distilled water and you need to top it up honestly like every three weeks um, it's quite often that it wears down and we're not even you know we're in a cold climate you know in the UK um, whereas somewhere like California or somewhere like that I should imagine they'd be topping up the coolant every week um, because I certainly notice in this when we've got uh, a few hot days we're definitely working through that coolant a bit quicker um, so yeah a reverse osmosis system that's another one that you'll have to invest in if you buy a CNC machine I conveniently got all the water everywhere so if you can see here water there the hose basically come off because we've only got tap water at the moment um, which is not great at all for the coolant um, so I need to sort out the reverse osmosis system and I've got water all over the floor as you do anyway um, I need to see if I can find this part because this is the first one that's machined um, uh, it's looking very, very, very full inside the machine right now. Look down there. Um, I'm actually <laughs> slightly concerned. Let's just check diagnostic, because when I checked diagnostic earlier, it said coolant level was, um, mm, uh, was like down to about 20%. That's why I topped it up. I only topped it up to 70%, and I'm already on 82%. <sighs> okay, so where's this part? Where has this part gone? Sometimes they end up back here, sometimes not. So I'm guessing it's gone in this little mess down here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is what we do. It's whoa, slippery in the gloves. <laughs> right, where's it gone? That's that's the collet that I make. So hopefully this goes on. It doesn't. That might be that the ID. It might be that the ID was off. It might be uh, the texture's pretty poor inside there. 
So it might be the IDs off, it might be the coolant wasn't getting in there properly, it might be that the shaft on this is slightly different. Let's have a quick measure and find out. So the shaft on this is 15.96, 16 mil for all intensive purposes, but we'll go 15.96. Now, interestingly, the drill that goes through this is 16 mil, and the hole size, according to this, is 16.04. However, at the back, it's 16.01. That shouldn't be a problem, should it? Because it's nice and tight. It's just not going in, which tells me that this has got some sort of edge on it, wouldn't be surprised, Chinese thing, 15.99, 15.98, I mean really I want to make that fit, right, because this is this is how you centre everything up, um, so maybe I'll get the grinder out, oh look, there we go, oh, it got it on in the end, so that's our sleeve to basically go in there, um, now I just need to measure the OD, because again the OD is critical, it's 20 mil uh, going in there and we've got 20.02 which is probably not going to fit, probably. So let's see if we can get that holder, let's get one of the holders out and just check. Door is open, yeah I know door is open. I don't know if you've ever noticed that we don't have the very nice little hash tray that hangs off of here and um, that's because we don't have the space for it we because of we use this as our walkway here we close this like this and when the hash tray hangs this way it means you'd only close it like that far um, so we've got it underneath the machine <laughs> sad really because I really like the holder um, and I like you know it comes with a brush and all the little tool in um, the, the little tray etc that's magnetic it's, it's quite a nice idea um, but yeah we've just we had it put on when we first had the machine but we've never been able to use it oh. so it tells me these are going to be a little bit hard to get out I suppose I should really knock out the um, the tap first right My rubber mallet's also broken. The head keeps coming off. Tap. Out. There's our tap. I'll tell you what, these taps, they've done really well. They've spent a year in the machine and they're still good. And they see a lot of action. Was that on the right hand printer? Yeah right hand okay that one's definitely been that one I think has been the same as some of the other ones that I've oh no okay bin or oh, with foul box whatever right okay if you leave the, 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 the left one looks good yeah I think both top, I think no, the, the bottom, left one the bottom one. left has crashed and it's like a big mess oh um, okay yeah all right I'll be I'll, I'll sort it yeah. a bit it's not like built up with uh, yeah I know what you mean it fits but there's a problem a problem I didn't even think about how did I miss this <laughs> how are you going to get two of these side by side you can't can you if I'd gone for two of these, it'd have worked. Oh, Chris, what have you done? Okay, well, it's the 10 mil holder that's caused us an issue right now, so we've machined it, it is what it is. I'm not gonna have a machining video of that then, because there's no point in doing the other sleeve. Sorry, guys, it doesn't really matter anyway, you get the idea. Um, so I'm gonna screw these in, we'll get these in, and then I'll show you that bit. So it's in, but it's going to have to be a temporary solution. I'm going to have to order two new holders, and I think they're going to have to be ER16s like this one. Um, I'll double check the measurements and make sure you can get two ER16s 
in this time so we make sure we don't screw this up. Basically the, um, the two taps need to be the same distance because if you had it here and you started doing this one, what would happen is you'd catch the body, so, <clears throat> so using this tap, going through there, you'd catch the body of the outside of this against here. Um, but the point, the main point of getting this in anyway was to machine um, these little hinges. Um, so, you know, we can do that, we can get on at least do that. Um, it's one of those things, I'm not, it's silly isn't it? I didn't check, it's my own fault. I'm not saying they'll go to waste, I'm sure they'll get used. Um, you know, we'll probably, if I get one, if I just buy one ER16, I can move it to there and be done. Cool, anyway, see you later guys.